Well, another day rooting like a pig in the barnyard searching for some corn. And I found none today, honestly. Um, I um, had to swap out a motor control board. I think I might have fried another one or it was a bad chip somewhere. I don't know what's going on. Two in a row now. Um, I strapped on the um, Hall Effect switch and I had it blinking, but my my real problem all day, and I don't know why, was um, this relay uh, apparently is a 3 amp relay. It says 3 amps and it can handle up to 30 volts DC, which is, you know, really beefy. But on the other hand, I just tested it. It takes at least 12 volts to fire it. Um, and 12 volts is... I don't put 12 volts through my digital stuff. I do five, maybe eight mo at the most. Um, so I wasn't able to fire the, the solenoid properly. <coughs> the relay, <coughs> the solenoid within the relay, whatever. And therefore, none of the other circuitry seemed to work right. Um, so now I'm going to have to get an auxiliary power supply to fire this. Yet, Somehow it's supposed to be in this circuit through the grounds. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I have to, I guess I have to test it somehow. But in case, what I did do of merit, I would think, well, well one is I fussed with the relay and learned that it's, I'm not doing it right. Um, I took all of my jumps out and put in what we call, I don't know, just straight wire. It's just, uh, it's solid wire with a um, bare tip and you can poke it in that hole and then it's a receptacle and now it's connected to that hole and anything along that hole is connected. That's pretty cool, right? So like all these parts here, one, two, three parts, they're all connected, those three. Um, and up here and whatnot. At any rate, that makes it a lot neater to see and able to trace the power circuit. You know, this is power coming in, this is power coming in. This is a volt regulator, I'm so sorry. This is power coming in. This is a volt regulator. Uh, this is the output of the voltage. And this is going to pull some of that over. And this is going to be the grounds. There's a ground there. Power comes in here. Ground is there. And all in here is work being done. Supposedly work being done. This is a whatever it is. There's a relay. There's a diode. Uh, there's another one of those MOSFET transistor diagonal Darlington 122 hike and relays are excuse me resistors and then some jumpers and then to ground the motors grounded the fan motor is grounded right fan motor is sitting here taking power it gets power from way down here and way down here was the um, the green corner the green wire if you can see the colors, not very well, maybe. There's a green wire there, and that green wire is the hot corner. So green is good. Green goes out. And I could get the idle circuit to work fairly well. Um, that's easy because the solenoid's not supposed to fire, right? And so that's at rest. It runs. That's easy. But I couldn't get it to fire when the engine was running, when the in wheels were turning and all that energy going in there, I was trying to capture that in some fashion and, and get it over here. But it, I had some circuit that was supposed to do that. Um, I, I went through the circuit again. Um, I color-coded everything, and I did a green trace for this circuit here. Another green trace for this. This is the run. And this is the break. This is the connect the power. Con the pink connect the power. The yellow is the uh, identify. We want to run now. And so fire that relay. Identify. We want to run. Fire the relay. If you don't fire, then we just go down to this green line, which is idle voltage. We just bring in idle voltage when nothing is fired up, which is perfect. You turn on the uh, the um, transformer, the track is hot, 
the motor controller is in neutral, so to speak. So all the other items, the lights and, and these devices here turn on. They turn on, but there's no signal to produce anything, so they're idle. This one is hot wired in, and since it's not turned on, it's at rest at three. Like three is a normally closed, and four is a normally open when this is fired. That's how the that thing works. So if there's no power through here, then there's nothing running, and so we can run idle, sit there at the station while we're loading up. Passengers do a station announcement. You know, train 54, getting ready to go. Okay, fine. And then when it takes off, um, somehow this gets energized. Um, I haven't got that figured out. That's my problem. I thought there was some... It sensed something from up here that says, oh, we're supposed to do work now. Uh, hey, turn us on. Let us feed the motor. But I have yet to see that circuit actually function. And I've checked everything. The The outlining in color was making sure I had the routings right. And then you see every once in a while a red check mark. And that was me auditing every step, every piece. I have this. It's wired one to this. Uh, this is wired properly. The voltage travels up fine, goes to the arrow. Same here. And every check mark you see, I checked the value of the part and the part was wired in properly. Every check mark. So I did that. And yet I still couldn't get what I thought was power to the right place at the right time. And then I realized later on, this thing was clicking and clacking intermittently and I couldn't figure out why. Well, it's when I was running full blast off the motor, it would be getting almost 12 volts and that would probably fire it. But that's only when the transformer was up to 12 volts. Now, I didn't figure that out till late, so I didn't get a lot done today. Um, and I had other things I wanted to do. I got to get the sensors worked out. This is one of the packaged sensors and a red light flashes every time the magnet goes by, which is okay, but it's not as delicate as I wanted. I wanted something a little more tunable. And I don't have it yet. So I'm not happy with that. <laughs> and I'm not happy with that. And I don't know what's happening over here. I thought I was closer with this schematic, which did not have this switching mechanism whatsoever. And I'm thinking what I may want to do is go back to this because I did have brake and that working. Go back to this and come up with my own method of firing that. I may put in a second relay. Maybe I have a different kind of relay that's a little less, uh, doesn't require so much that it could run off of uh, the voltage going to the motor. Since that voltage and then fire a remote relay that would then connect this to big bolts. Something like that. I have to come up with a way this, this can work because this is just killing me. It's so frustrating. Um, um, it's like magic. Um, only it's, it can't be magic, I understand. But, oh, man. I mean, you think you can get it, right? You think, oh, I read the specs on it. I... I see what the circuit's supposed to do, uh, but it didn't seem to do it. Huh? I don't know. Anyway, that was my day. I hope you had a better day than I did. That's two days now. It's just wearing, wearing. Indeed, uh, we have to be closer than this. Anyway, um, and I know I'm not the brightest bulb on the tree but um i think if you trace things and you test them and you check polarity and you check circuit flow and you put in uh power and you trace it you ought to be able to figure out what turns on when and why and then deal with it and i'm not able to do it i have the new chuff sound i haven't been able to build that assembly and test it yet and I've got some other things I need to move on to because I, I need this done so I could get Leon's engine 
back up and doing what it's supposed to be doing. And this is so close. I just know it's close. Okay, I'll be back. Maybe. No Baileys tonight, gang. Yep, we're going, going to bed dry later.